But no, one minute. Don't, don't put me on the spot like that. At least on maybe twice a year. Hey, good morning, YouTubers. Good morning. Thank you. Terry's just trying to blow smoke up my butt about how much he listens to the show. <laughs> it's a bit early. I haven't had breakfast yet. Good thing Andy's making ham pies. Oh, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good breakfast this morning. Look at this. Yeah, that's going to get you off to the right start. Well, we have Inez, so she's the most important. <laughs> and, I need a lot of clapping. Okay. We, uh, we were waiting for Henry and Adriana, but I don't see them. So guess who you're playing trivia with? Inez and Terry. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And we're Chef. gonna do um, trivia early because our, our big guest is in the second hour. So the team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. The reason oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna, gonna let you direct that. No problem. Um, so when do you want to do the? Uh... I think it's at the uh, 9:45. But I gotta show you this the person that we're zooming with. Um, she... I read the whole thing when yeah. she came out last summer. Oh, good. Yeah. She was really awesome. She won 30 ribbons at this country fair in Kentucky and. Yeah. But it, it, she took first place in cakes, first place in pies, in cookies, first, second, and third place. Brownies, first place. Savory bread, first, second, and third oh place. Oh, my God. Candy, first, second. She got 30 ribbon <laughs> in one fair. <laughs> Is it a really, really, really small town? <laughs> no, but she's 74 years old. She knows all the tricks. Oh, wow. That's so cool. That's she so got cool. best marmalade, best jam, best tomato, <laughs> best whatever. She got best of everything. I can't wait to meet She her. made sensation on the internet when that happened. That happens in the summer. I remember reading the article. You did, yeah. Yeah, it, when it came out on the, I, I read that in, I think, the New York Times. Yeah, she was on everything. And, uh, man, she went crazy on the internet. She became a sensation at 74 years old. See? It's never too late. See, we can do it, Inez. I, can, I still have time. I still have time. <laughs> she had a dream about us, dear. <laughs> you serious? My wife, my wife woke up this morning. She goes, I was just dreaming. Then somebody was dream dancing in bikinis. And she was thinking, who was it that she was thinking? And of course, I barely awake. I'm like, I bypassed up. She was like, oh, yeah. And we were singing. And uh, I'm like, who was it? She said that this morning when she woke up, she woke up. Oh, his wife is fantastic. <laughs> Would, would oh yeah <laughs> she definitely she'd fit right in oh yeah all She's right buddy. Chick all the way <laughs> my lovely love yeah. lovely wife that's what we are we're looking for the hippie chicks there's still plenty of them out there pardon there's still plenty of them out there yeah <laughs> for sure so taste of the week Tenderloin. No, no. Test of the week is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, then uh, trivia at 9.45. Can you do me a favor? <coughs> is there any way we can see the demographic of that show after it airs? See if that changes to put the trivia on the first show and on the second show? Because that trivia drives a lot from what I remember. It would be very funny or not funny. It would be very interesting to see if that is actually true and if it actually changes anything. To see if everybody turns it off after, after the trivia. Because that's what I think that's going to happen. Is a lot of people are going to turn off because a lot of people wait for the trivia. Uh, I think the last time we looked at the numbers, um, more people stayed on for the first half on the radio. So I don't know what happened right, with right, the right. podcast. The radio, yeah, yeah, the radio. Well, the podcast. So we'd have to get. Can, we can't possibly know because they can download we the can. whole podcast, but they can fast forward anything. Yeah, they, want. they just go right. That. 
It just go right to trivia. Right. That's what I would do. <laughs> I don't want to listen to And then go back to, okay, what, what do I want to listen to? Yeah. That's what I would do. I got the world in two yesterday. Just in case you you what? I got the world in two yesterday. <laughs> oh, thank God. I need a mini puzzle in one minute and 40 seconds. Wow. That's no big deal. My wife will get it in one minute and two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, will you teach me how to play Wordle? I still don't know. Oh, it's very but it, simple. But it'll have to be after this. Let's rumble. But well, once you do, <laughs> I haven't played today, so we can play it together. Okay. <laughs> All right. You ready? We're ready. Oh, I got. I got to think about this. So wait, what are you doing? She's our. She's gonna just. Commentary. Okay, good. Trivia. I just want to know if she has a segment because I don't no, know. No. Okay. She's our guest. Hang out with us. What's your name? Yeah. How do you spell it? I am. Just like I would spell it. And we're going to find her a hot date. <laughs> Needs a date. I'm going to write this down. Yeah. <laughs> and she's beautiful. Wait, no kidding. She's in front of me. And uh, this is not Tinder, this is hot stove, but I'll describe her for you. Gorgeous, beautiful, exotic, oh. and definitely a sense of romanticism in there. Oh. How can you resist? True. If you're handsome, if you're six foot tall, still have some muscles, and yeah. um, good sense of humor, and most importantly, you're a sensitive man, she's yours. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you, by the way, by the way, you're not married and you don't have 16 children. No, <laughs> their kids are grown. No one's at go. home. Oh wow! Oh, I just, I just tinned around on the internet. Did you hear that? What? I just tinned around on the internet. Oh my god! Tinned around. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> folks, the number is. All right. Welcome to the Hot Stop Society radio show here at the Hotel Andra, 4th and Virginia. If you haven't been in this building, you should definitely owe it to yourself a little visit when you're downtown Seattle. And uh, even make it a staycation this time of year, especially in November. You know, it's a nice time to just take a little weekend, take a breather, come downtown, have some nice little pastries across the street at the Dahlia Bakery and have lunch at Lola and come at the Hotel Andro and have yourself a little nice evening here. Great rates for the winter, too. Great it, rates, especially it's November. Good, they've got a special on sweets running right now, so it's worth checking out. And the remodel is so beautiful. And that's the voice of Miss Pam. I'm calling guess, you Miss Pam. Because She's we the, don't uh, have Tom. Co-host co today, because Tom is actually uh, taking a breather, so that's good. good. We're very happy about that. And I'm Terry Rotiro, the chef in the hat. All right, we have a big show today. What do we have on the show, Pam? Well, I'm infatuated currently with the website Chef Steps. Do you ever look at it? Of course. Yeah, they I'm are, a member. They're doing very sophisticated things. So they've got a feature right now on potatoes, which we're going to dig into. Um, because Tom's not here, we're going to talk about pork tenderloin because he doesn't <laughs> like it, and I do. <laughs> he hates it. And I want you to help me with it. Well, I'm going to do the same thing that he does. Pork tenderloin. So don't buy pork tenderloin. <laughs> buy something else. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you're going to help me. Uh, so we're going to taste six apple varieties. Um, my friend Inez Gray is going to help us with Rub With Love Food for Thought Tasty Trivia. Which, by the way, today we're playing <laughs> Tasty Trivia on the first hour of the show. Because? The, the first hour of the show. Because on the second hour, who do we have? Linda Skins. Linda Skins. In case you haven't heard of her, that means you don't have internet or you haven't checked <laughs> the internet or the New York Times or the, any kind of publication. Or the Today Show or, or NPR Today Show. or anything. <laughs> uh, we'll tell you more about her on the second hour, but do stay tuned because she's a kick in the pants and my God, did she win Blue Ribbon. Yeah. So what's your taste of the week, Chef? My taste of the week is the chicken... So what do we call that? Chicken soup, I guess, my wife made last night. I was thinking about that. I had something else in mind, but this is what I'm going to choose because I, I, 
I really was in heaven. You know, yesterday was pretty cold last night. Yes. And um, so she takes this whole chicken and she butchers a chicken that makes my hair stand <laughs> up. And I only have three. So you notice it. <laughs> um, my hair stand up because she butchers a chicken leaving so much meat on the bone. Oh, yeah. But she purposely does that because she takes a carcass and she puts it with some water, some vegetables, some spices, and she makes a chicken stock. She starts so building it. Now the chicken on the meat, on the bone, is all cooked. And we peel that out and put that with some rice and all the vegetables from the stock, which are diced properly, and all the, the broth. And we have a wonderful chicken soup from all the bone that gets peeled off. And She's smart. Both her and I love to just take the bone and, you know, take the meat off the bone and eat off the bone. So I was like a little hog in heaven last night. I put some Dijon mustard, of course. Of course. Some gherkins, also known as cornichons or pickles, and um, in my soup. And um, what is it? I do one more thing. Oh, a little cumin. Cumin. Ground, That's a surprise. Ground cumin. And uh, that was... Like heaven on earth, or oh, the other way around, heaven on earth. <laughs> I put an H where there is no H. Um, you know, it was really, really delicious. And um, I recommend people to do that. So now we have two breasts and two legs left of the chicken that we can cook any way we want for the rest of the week. Brilliant. My, my taste is also chicken because last week, Chef Annie did this remarkably beautiful presentation, small chicken that she completely deboned. And then uh, shaped it into a football esque kind of bundle and covered it with a beautiful decoration of puff pastry. Oh, en croute. En croute. A wow. chicken en croute. Annie, you did all this? It That's came a... out so. So, wait, wait, the chicken was raw, right? Was it raw? Yeah. No, you pre baked it a little, right, Annie? A little bit before she put it in, in the puff pastry. But when she started to slice it, and it made these beautiful medallions, but it was glistening and juicy and uh, it was spectacular. What so was we're going to try to talk Tom into doing that for our New Year's Eve party. So what was in the chicken? Herbs. Did you, did you put any herbs and vegetables or anything? No? You have to report because uh, they can't hear her. Uh-oh, she's coming to the Chef, microphone. Chef is coming to the mic because I'm curious, what did you put in that chicken? That made it so moist. Um, it was herb and garlic with uh, Tom's African peri peri. Ooh. There we go. Nice choice. So the yes. chicken was about halfway cooked, maybe? The um, rest? Yeah. So well, was... I I took it to one, 110. Yeah. And also then it's... I cooled it down completely. Then I wrapped it with the puff pastry and then baked it. Beautiful. Now, how long did you bake it for? But, uh, for, uh the, with the with the puff pastry in it. Yeah. Uh, forty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Sounds sounds like a chicken Wellington or something. I was, it, yeah, it was, it was the yeah. chicken I was Wellington. I was thinking you were gonna put chick, uh, a duck cell, like a mushroom duck cell, in the middle of the chicken. You can. That would have been already cooked, and so it would have not been rendering yeah. any liquid, and then you'd have this wonderful little chicken. You could call it, um, you know, Wellington. Yeah. And he's chicken, got Annie and Sean are making and you know what you do a video of it. Is you put a little diced foie gras in it too. <gasps> so all that beautiful diced what? foie gras. Oh, geez. That yes. would be nice and lovely. Oh. That's how we'll talk Tom into it for New Year's Eve. Now you're just making it way more expensive, Chef. <laughs> I'm trying to cut the food cost down. You know what? People will pay for foie gras. <laughs> they certainly will. <laughs> all right. And what is, what is your taste of the week? Oh, that was it. Oh, that was the chicken. It. Okay. That sounds, that sounds really delicious. That's a nice chicken too. Wow. And now, and coming up, now... our annual debate on pork tenderloin. All right. It's going to be a big good. battle. Stay tuned. I can't <laughs> wait to hear that here on Carol 97.3 FM. Sean DeTori, you'll see that you need to add a nice little <laughs> clapping track for us. Same as last week. Wow. So we...
just to go live. I mean, seven days, seven days. Well, right now it's live on Facebook. Uh, yeah, that's the one I watch. <laughs> and people say, oh my God, how do you do? You know, aren't you afraid to be live on Facebook? I go, I never even remember I'm on live on Facebook. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> no, but the thing is, I don't remember one. Do you remember? I'm not, I'm, 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 no, but I mean, what I'm saying is I don't think, oh, I'm on camera or whatever. No. That doesn't come to mind when I'm doing the show. All right, ready? Yep. <clears throat> Perfect tenderloin. My God, Tom's going to, Tom's going to miss a shot in one minute as soon as I talk about it. <laughs> All right. We are back in the kitchen at yeah, the Hot Stove Society radio show here in the Hot Stove Society kitchen in the Hotel Andra. My God, that's a big mouthful. Uh, I'm Terry Rotiro, the chef in the hat. My co-host today is Pam. Thank you. Miss Pam. What a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So we were going to talk about pork tenderloin because you love pork tenderloin and we can't discuss it with Tom because he hates it. Exactly. So I'm, I'm not in the section, the next section of neither or. I'm in the section of I've done pork tenderloin many times in my life. Um, do I love it as much as some other pieces of pork? No. And if I had to pick a piece of pork, in the store, I would not take pork tenderloin. However, I've cooked it many times, and I, I sympathize with the idea of a home cook making pork tenderloin because it's easy to cook. That's it's, a, a it's key. also easy to mess up. Yeah, you can so dry it out so fast. Right, because there is no fat. So that's the part that's not attractive to Tom and I. There is no fat, no muscle, no. There is nothing else besides just meat. And that's usually is pretty boring, just like a beef tenderloin, just like, you know, the big part of the roast beef, the center part. Who cares? You know, it's like it's all meat. It's like after you have a bite or two of that, you're done. Well, that's why it's important to prepare it with something that complements it. Correct. Now, you know, we just talked about Annie wrapping uh, chicken in puff pastry. You should wrap your pork tenderloin in puff pastry. Ah, I but like first, the duck but cell. first. You got to sear it. What? You got to sear it first, meaning that you got to take your pork tenderloin and give it a little sear on the outside very quickly, not, not cooking it, searing it only. So a little fat in the pan, like a cast iron pan or something very hot, and give it a nice sear. Take it out of the pan. So you, you can picture that, right? Yes. Just a little bit of maybe a canola oil or, or regular vegetable oil and a drop of butter and then sear your pork tenderloin so you get a nice searing on the outside. Take it out of there, put some rub onto your, um, onto your uh, pork tenderloin. Now from here you can do what we were talking about, mushroom, mushroom duck cell. So you take some mushroom and you, cook, you dice them really small and you cook it very slowly or medium heat, I should say, salt, pepper, keep it simple. A little bit of uh, ground coriander and ground cumin, just a little bit of that. Uh, and a little bit of uh, nutmeg. Grated. Nutmeg's a great idea. Yeah, sweeten up the whole thing. So you take those those uh, mushroom, duck cell, you cool it down, and then you take your puff pastry, you roll your puff pastry, you put the mushroom duck cell first, you put your pork tenderloin, you roll the whole thing up, like you would a beef wellington or whatever, so you put the dough right on top, you pinch the dough so it's closed in, and you bake it. So you brush with egg wash. First, you make a little design. You put your name on there, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> with, with love for you. And then, and then you put it in the oven. High heat, very high heat. Uh, 400, I would say start at 400 and then turn it down to 375. Yeah, this wouldn't take very long, would yeah. it? No, it won't take very long because both your mushroom and your pork tenderloin is already seared. It's not cooked all the way, but it's seared. So it's not going to take very long for the pork tenderloin. And the pork tenderloin is not that big anymore. You know, it used to be a little bit bigger than it is now, but pork tenderloin are usually about the size of a, a bit bigger than a silver doll, you know, so in terms of circumference. So it's, it's not that big, um, which is also why you want to sear it fast. But the searing is to give it at least some kind of a personality other than just <laughs> some texture, <laughs> some, something. <laughs> I'm just dying here. I'm like, you got to give it something. Well, what about if you weren't going to put it in puff pastry? How would you build a crust? And would you 
does it benefit from marinating or does it not take on any flavor? If so you there's another way you can take your, your tenderloin, and I used to do this at Rover's, is to take it and... Oh, and so you served it at Rover's, huh? So oh, yeah. it's not that... I serve lamb low brow. and pork. But not together, but at different time. Uh, lamb much more commonly than pork, obviously. But you butterfly the loin. So you butterfly it so then you, you cut it, you open it, and you cut it again. So now it's wide open on the board, and it's only this big around, this stick. Mm. Do you picture that? Yes. So you open that, and then you put your duxel in there. Then you put your spices. Mm. Then you put whatever you, whatever you want to put in there. You can, you can do goat cheese. You can do so many things in there. You roll it up, and you tie it up. And then you sear it. And then you wow. cut the string at the end. That and sounds you, delicious. And then you cut little medallion and you put those on the, and now you become very fancy and rover-esque. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to be fancy and rover-esque. Okay, well, that, that you just did that if you do that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's walk through this process. Please. <clears throat> so, you take your tenderloin, you cut it. First, you cut it about, try to do like a quarter inch from the top. You cut it, not all the way through, and then you open it. Then you take the tenderloin, you put, you turn it upside down, and then you cut the other one same way. So now you have a three flop tenderloin. You picture that? Yes. Then you take your mushroom duck cell. First, you season your, your pork. You always, when you do layers of things, you always season each layer separately. Because otherwise, you're going to end up with under seasoned stuff. So yeah. a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe some leaf, maybe a few tarragon leaves, and you could put on there just like that. Put your mushroom duck cell right on top of that. You know tarragon, right? I thought you were going to go, oh, tarragon, yes. <laughs> it's been my... I love it like you do. <laughs> and then you roll that tenderloin really tight, and then you put a string, and you tie it up. Each, like every other, like every inch, inch and a half, you put a string, and you tie it up. And then you seal that in butter, brown butter. Just brown butter. You know me, I love brown butter. So brown butter, For good is, reason. brown butter is you take a pan that's got a heavy bottom, like a cast iron or a thick aluminum, I mean a stainless steel pan. You put it on the fire, you walk away, you go make yourself a cocktail and you come back. Then you I like drop, how you roll. Then you drop a little bit of vegetable oil in your pan. Then you put a nugget of butter in there. So that the, the oil will stop the butter from burning instantly. So you put your butter in there. Your butter is going to turn brown, and then, then you drop your tenderloin in there, and then you give it a sear on all sides, and then you, re you remove it from there, and you put it in the oven at 350 degrees, and within 15 minutes, you'll have pork tenderloin, and it will stay really moist oh, because of your... You've um, made me so happy. So then you take it out, and you let it rest. Important. That's very important. And then you slice in between the strings... Then you cut with a pair of scissors, you cut the string, and then you have those gorgeous little medallions to put on the on the on the plate, and you can use your green vegetable and your carrots and your other vegetable to put on the plate right next to it with a little rice, maybe, or maybe uh, some beans. I would beans would be good with that. I love a good beans beans next to my pork. I like that. So I like apples, like a savory oh, yeah. apple. Well, you could do an apple bacon savory. Kind of saute, yeah. you, you render your bacon or your lardon. I would do lardon, not just thin bacon, so thicker. I would do sauteed apple. I would mix the two together and put that with beans. You've solved mm. it, chef. Thank you so much. Ooh, I'm getting hungry on this. <laughs> I know. What a Dang. beautiful description. Great recipe. Woo. Thank you. All right. So next, what are we talking about? Potatoes? Potatoes from We're gonna Chef We're going to go Steph. to Chef Steps and talk about potatoes and Pam found, and I'm curious to hear what she has to say about this. Stay with us on Carol 97.3 FM. We'll be right back. <laughs> I guess we won't put that in. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we will. This, whoa, is, the, whoa, whoa, this whoa. is the Halloween edition. <laughs> Who's he got? I know. Mash smashed. Yeah. So I read that recipe. And? Oh, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it on the radio. Oh, good. Okay. As Tom likes to say, save it for the radio. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, look at what just appeared. 
Oh, my little chicken, chicken puffetry. Oh, is that what it is? Uh, I think it's better than it's blunt today. It looks like vegetables. Mm. And as are you cooking at home? Or? Not, now that the kids are gone, I don't have to eat. Are you going to be cooking everything? Yeah. They're not partaking in anything? Well, I mean, they'll help, but, yeah. Okay, they don't really eat so much because they're not cooking. How old are they? Uh, 24, 21, and 18. And they're not into cooking? Mm -hmm. Stop them for a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's my way. Well, uh, people, when, well, when people say, cook? yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. They have to. No, no, they, of course they do. No, it's not of course they do. They do because they like to eat, you know, what they want to eat. <laughs> oh, so he makes the money too. That's that's a problem. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Wait, Joe, is is that the place on Lake Union? Oh, okay. But it's where all the Seahawks go after the game. You know, it's the real thing. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the same So, isn't Joey the one that uh, kicked you out? Yeah, that's what I thought. Was it on Lake Union ever? That's the place that uh, Tom and I went to, and they said, we went in there for a cocktail after the radio show. We were doing a radio show on Cairo. We went there. He's like, let's go. For, we used to go for a cocktail every every week after the show. We go, and he goes, "Oh, let's go to let's go to Joey." We get in there, we sit down, we order our drink. Manager comes, he said, "You gotta take off your hat." And I go, "I'm sorry, what?" He goes, "You gotta take off your hat. No no hat allowed." I'm like, "I'm the chef in the hat. I can't." I, can't. I was like, "I'm sorry." I'm, he says, "Well, I'm like, what what policy is this?" They go, well, you know, we don't want people to wear caps because of gangs and everything. And, and I go, so Tom, Tom, of course, was having a day at the fair, at the fair with that one. No. Yeah, you gangster. <laughs> I was like, Yo. start rapping, start rapping. Anyway, I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, I, I'm 60 years old. I look like a rapper, right? And I look like a gangster, too. Anyway, needless to say, we had to leave. <laughs> but but for some reason I, I thought it was Joey and it was on Lake Union. Okay, so I didn't dream that, right? Okay. All right. All right. <coughs> Let's smash it. We are back on the Hot Stove Society yeah, Radio. I'm sorry. Oh, no, we're not. Where is Sean? He's there. Oh, can we go? Oh, I thought you said no, we're not. Okay. <laughs> All right, we are back at the Hot Stove Society Radio. We are in the kitchen at the Hotel Andra at the Hot Stove Society Kitchen. If you've never had a cooking demo or a cooking class or what else do they do here? Theaters and everything. Yeah, fabulous <laughs> private parties. Private parties. Oh, my God, so sensational. Anyway, this is a great place to do it, and it's a perfect environment to cook in. It will inspire you. If you're not inspired when you come in, you definitely will get inspired just by the setting here. It makes you want to cook. See those tables, those mixers and everything, KitchenAid everywhere. I mean, it's really a very enticing place. Thank so, you. It's got a lot of soul. Thank you. All right. I appreciate that. Next off thing we're going to talk about is, because Thanksgiving is coming up, you said you saw an article on Chef Step or a recipe about smash what did you call it? Smashed and they call mashed it and smashed. Mashed, smashed, easy, cheesy, creamy, dreamy. 
So six categories of potato recipes oh. on Chef Steps. All right, here we go. And so I did read the smash potato or the mashed potato recipe. The Duchess one that I fell in love with. Um, that is piped on yeah, to yeah. your baking sheet. And you so, had a reaction. <laughs> I was allergic to potato. No. <laughs> uh, the reaction was not on the Duchess, was on the mashed potato. Oh, okay. Just the mashed potato. To me, it's over whipped. It's oh. one thing I don't do. So they said to not peel because they use, um, uh, what kind of potato they use? They use the, uh, oh, those long uh, fingerling. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they use fingerling. They say you don't really need to, you know, you brush them really nicely and clean them, but you don't need to peel them. Um, I would agree with that. No problem. I have no problem with having skin in my potato. But um, when they're cooked, they say to mash them uh, gently and then they take the cream and the butter. Oh, no, they, they, they mash them really strongly. Then they add the cream and the butter and then mix it gently uh, to not extend the gluten on the potato. I usually, what I do is, for me, what I do, and I, this is when I love my KitchenAid, um, I take the potatoes that are cooked and, you know, all is pretty much the same size, put it in the mixer once they're cooked with just a little bit of the juice, and I have reduced my cream and my butter on the side, I put them together, and I reduce it down by about half, so it's a bit thicker of a product, and then I oh. put it on the potato together, and then I mix the whole thing together, because I only do one mixing, and, and that allows the potato not to have, like, the gluten extended and not to be so, you know, looking like a rubber band. Yeah, they had a... Um that's the benefit of looking at that website is they explain the science behind that right. and the handling of it. And you right. don't want it to get gluey. No. Because that destroys the whole point of eating a delicious potato. Right. <laughs> and avoiding steps of mixing and mixing again. And then more importantly, I think, in the potato is to avoid the steps of like cooling down the potatoes, mixing them, you know, or having the t potato when you start first mixing them to be really hot and cooling it down and adding the butter and the cream and mix the heck out of it, then you have a pile of rubber band on your hand. Yeah. So, but the cool part about their recipe and a recommendation that they make is you don't have to wait for Thanksgiving Day to make your mashed potato. You can actually make it, you know, three, four days before, keep it in a Ziploc bag. You know, you, you mix the potato, you mash the potato, and personally, I mix the whole thing together, butter and cream. And I put it in a, in a sandwich bag or in a Ziploc bag, flat as possible in my fridge. The day of, you take a pot of water that's hot, and you put your bag in there, and your mashed mm. potato will warm up very simply. Just make sure it's not just too hot of a, of a water. Like, you don't want the water to be boiling crazy. You just want it to be hot. So it will bring the temperature slowly but surely up. Now, with the cream and the butter in it, one thing that might happen is a little separation. All you have to do, you know, because the fat will want a tender to separate from the potato a little bit, all you have to do is mix it gently. Yeah, and then give you, it boom. a little whisk. Yeah, just give it a little whisk, and it's nice and warm and fresh, and, and it's ready. I've seen that because um, everybody's writing about Thanksgiving now, of course. Sure. And, and most are recommending that that is uh, – preparing your potatoes is an important thing you can do to get out of the way. Yeah. Like next week and yeah, have yeah, it yeah. just be done. Yeah, and this is not a conversation that used to take place – People never used to say that, but now you see it everywhere. Yeah. People are like, oh, yeah, you can make your mashed potato ahead. I'm like, yeah, if you know what you're doing and, and not over, you know, beat the, the crap out of your potatoes, yes, it's easy to do. And you can even, one thing they recommend in Chef Steps, which I think is even better, is you take your cream and your butter and you mix it the day of. So all you have is your potato that's mashed, and then you mix your cream the day of. That's a, even a better idea if you want it to be even top. Well, the recipe that caught my eye was the Duchess potatoes. Yes. And uh, because it is so beautiful. Correct. And it's very rich, though. But I was... It's classic. Is it? Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember hearing Potato of it. Potato but... Duchess is a classic. When I was apprentice, you have a piping bag. You, you pipe your mashed potato and eggs around the plate. Oh, yes, I have seen that. You've seen that. But I, I, I didn't know the name of the preparation. Yeah, potato dishes. And then you put it under the salamander, under the broiler, and then you give it a nice little um, color, 
nuts your potato dishes around your plate. And in the old days, it was very classic to do this with uh, big roast meat or whatever. You just use that, pipe it around the platter, <laughs> and they would put the platter in the oven or whatever and bake it. <clears throat> and then you'd have this nice little crispy on the outside exactly. and mash in the middle. That's the... Um... And the ones in this recipe are individual serving sizes. So I like the idea of the more crispy ratio of the sure, crust sure. to your, your individualized yeah, yeah. center. So No, it's a very easy recipe to make. I mean, it's not complicated. And I would advise anybody to go to Chef Step and sign up because they have definitely a good, well-tried recipe. And um, you remember, you, you, yeah. you coughed up the cash for the extra yeah. tips and techniques. Well, you know how I got to Chef Steps is I bought a jewel. You know, the, 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 uh, the cooker, the, what do you call that? The, the sous vide machine. Sous -vide, thank you. It's not a sous vide machine. It's a, a circulator. Oh. It's a circulator that you put in a water bath to do sous vide. But you, you could know. use any vessel. But you could use any vessel, yes. And that's a good part about it. And it also has a magnet on it, so it doesn't move. So it's, it's almost looking like a hand, hand mixer. You know, and, and then you put it in your pot and it makes, it does the same thing as a big one. And what do you, what have you been using that tool for, the sous vide? Um, I've used it for, you know, when you do big, I, I like using it when I do, for example, a big roast of any kind or a big uh, brisket, for example, or things like this. You cut it in pieces that go into the bags and then you put it in the water and it will totally cook that meat to a stage where just before searing, and I usually go slightly under that. Then I take a cast iron pan and sear nicely that meat so I have a lot of seared meat crust. But the inside is very, very, very tender. I mean, fork tender. So it's really a uh, beautiful way. Plus, what it does when you put it sous vide is if you put a couple bay leaf, it really impregnates the flavor of the bay into the meat, which I nice. really love. Yes. Same with tarragon, same with anything you put in there. So if you put spices, you go a little bit lighter on the spice, and you get all that meat impregnated with that spice. So it's a very, I think it has its purpose. Um, in, the, in the restaurant business, it's a little bit more difficult because of volume. But in the um, home use, it definitely has some room, definitely to play with. So if you have a pot of water, and you have the jewel, and you have your phone, because you can also use it on your iPhone and Cut it Which out. Is, oh, yeah, yeah. I have, I have the app on my phone. It's a very cool tool. I mean. All right. Go to Chef Steps. Look it up and buy one. This is an unabashed endorse, endorsement. But I have, yes. I mean. This, and the chef in the hat. Absolutely. It's a, good, it's a good tool to have if you're into sous vide. You know, I think it's an easy one. It's not too expensive. It's not, you know. And it comes with a really, really good backup of Chef Steps with recipes or many ways to use it. You know, so it's really cool. Love it. Thank you. You're very now welcome. Now what should we do next? What should we do next? Play well, we, we talked. Oh, wait. We're going to play Tasty Trivia. Yeah, but we, hold on. We have about one minute left. So I want to remind people that in April next year, I'm going to Ireland. <gasps> Since we just talked about potato, I just remember about Ireland. <laughs> and uh, we have a couple of seats left on that trip. So go to uh, the show. Uh, <laughs> Let me see. My friend Inez and I want to go. We're okay. <laughs> so it's the chef in the hat. We're going to dance in some pubs. Here we go. Oh, yeah, we definitely and will do sing, that. And sing. Oh, definitely. You love music. I, and, you know, I'm looking so forward to the warmth of the Irish soul. Yes. Because I heard nothing but anybody who's been there said how warm those people are and welcoming and so friendly. I can't wait. You're going to fit right in. Is it already? Is the trip up on 58 stars already? 58 star travel. 58starstravel.com, okay. yes. Um, you'll find information there. And if not, you can email the chef in the hat at 58starstravel.com, or you can email me, and um, you'll find all the information. It's uh, April 20th to the 28th in 2023. And again, we have a couple of seats left, so I just wanted to remind people, and well, just because it's going to go quickly, so it's already gone quickly. I only made one announcement before, so <laughs> shh, don't tell anybody. Inez, who's with us, who is us right here, she's like, shh, I want to go. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, coming up next, we're going to do a tasty trivia because this, this we love today, it. Tom is not here, so we're going to try to change the show without him knowing. <laughs> See what he says when he comes back. All right. Stay with us on 97.3 FM. Oh, this is going to screw up my day to do Tasty Trivia. It doesn't matter. It's Doing Tasty Trivia in the middle of the day. This okay. is going to be He's messed up. Five okay. if there's a loser and a winner. Okay. There is no loser, just winners. <laughs> you already won because you're on our show. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't know what happened to our other victims. <laughs> More hand pipes for us. We can have hand pies for lunch. You call those hand pie? Yeah. Is that what you call them? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. You eat with your hands. He's too elegant. And then my finger is going to be all greasy. I don't Thank want you. greasy fingers. <laughs> Just kidding. I love greasy fingers. All right. So let me see this. That's my way of doing. Inez is here. And uh, do I play last or do I play first? When do you want? I don't care. I think you we should go Annie first. Last. With Annie last. Here we go. <laughs> I always go first, so I'll just stay. Let me bring this on. We just want to see how <coughs> bad you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's that. So I need to find the text on the Tasty Trivia. Where is it? Uh, 945. No, I know, but where is it? Oh, where? is that that's the only text here? Oh, yeah. And, and it's so have, small. I have the where it's available right here that I'll read. All right, we are back in the kitchen of the Hustle of Society radio show. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Thierry Rotiro, the chef in the hat. And my co-host is Miss Pam. I like this name, Miss Pam. Yes, please keep that up. Miss Pam, I like that. It's very elegant. I like that. Thank you for replacing Tom for a day. Absolutely. He's it gives a well him a breather deserved. and us a breather. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm just kidding. I miss you, Tom. All right. We have decided to put the Tasty Trivia at the end of the first hour today, so let's roll with that. Food for Thought Tasty Trivia is brought to you by our very own Rub, not all, their very own Rub, with Love Spice Blend and Sauces. There are about 20 dry Rub flavors, four tangy sauces, and a spectacular toasty shallot mustard. They are a great addition to your pantry. Rub with Love is available. At Don and Joe's in the Pike Place Market, Wild Salmon Seafood at Fisherman's Terminals, and grocery stores like Metropolitan Market and PCC. And if you plan to attend the Gobble Up shopping event at Sandpoint in Seattle on the 19th of November, stop by and see Tom and Carol at our Rub with Love booth because they'll be there dishing out deliciousness. All right, wow. are we ready to play? So, Tasty Trivia, let's do it, Pam. And we're going to start with, uh, well, we have a special guest today, Inez Gray, who owns the remarkable Habitude Salon in Habitude. Ballard. And That's a good French name. It is, a, it is a different kind of salon because it is warm and welcoming and beautifully handmade, and I admire you for what you've built there, darling. Thank you for coming to the show today. Um, and she's agreed to play with us. Uh, all right, Annie. There are 70 species of truffles, though two varieties most people talk about are black and white. Since truffles are wild fungi that cannot be cultivated on a farm, which animal is traditionally used to hunt these wild delicacies? Pigs, sheep, monkeys, or horses? Pig. Yay! Number two. Varieties. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes. <laughs> that was my question, just so you know. 
<laughs> she was looking at me. I know, I know, I know. I know. It's for you today. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying it would be my question, right? <laughs> Varieties of this pelagic delicacy include Olympias, European flats, and Kumamoto's. Which delicious shellfish comes in these varieties? Do you want multiple choice or? Ashley, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. I... <laughs> varieties of this pelagic delicacy uh. include Olympias, European flats, and Kumamoto's. Which kind of shellfish? Sushi. Comes in these varieties. Oysters? Exactly. <laughs> if Sushi. You not, if you were not going to get that, I was going to come to you. Well, I think I, I You're was, on a roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, saffron is a powerfully flavored spice derived from the crocus flower. From which language was the name saffron ultimately derived? Arabic, Greek, Sanskrit, or Latin? Latin. Arabic. Arabic. Wow. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> True or false? One of the most popular sweets in human history is the delicious bee-produced concoction that we call honey. Aside from being a high source of carbohydrates, is it true or false that honey is a source of vitamins, minerals, and amino acids? Oh, that's tough. Yes. Oh, yes. Come on, it's man. It's true. It's true. <laughs> You probably can see that on the radio. Pam was shaking her head like, yes. <laughs> like, yes. Like, oh, my God. I don't know what you're talking about. I was looking somewhere exactly. else. <laughs> exactly. She was thinking of something else. Finally, that, that was number funny. five. Caviar consists of roe or the eggs of the sturgeon fish. There are several types of sturgeon produced caviar popular amongst connoisseurs. Which of these is not one of them? Beluga, Tobiko, Ocetra, and Saruga. Tobiko. Exactly. Yes. Tobiko flying is fish not roll. sturgeon row, but rather comes from the flying fish. Four out of five. Bravo. Ooh, honey. Yeah. You're going down, Chef Terry. <laughs> All right. I'm going down for sure. This is scary. Okay, Inez, it's going to be oh, your no. turn. Okay. Oh, these are fun. <laughs> the name foie gras often elicits fond memories of fine diners for many a gourmand. How does this term, foie gras, translate from the French? Is it goose fat, fattened liver, buttered duck, or oily poultry innards? <laughs> the third, what was the third one? Buttered duck or, or fattened liver. <laughs> um, buttered duck. <laughs> fat and I love that. I love buttered duck. That's a nice name. It is great. You're such a buttered duck. Um, perhaps the king of shellfish, the lobster, is prized by lovers of seafood. Uh, aside from the delicious meat, mostly de um, derived from the claws and tails, the lobster roe, blood, and tomali are all edible. Which part of the lobster is called toma tomali? The swimmerettes, the head sack, the intestine or the liver? <laughs> um, the liver. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you missed the last one, you got this one. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> number three, vinegars are key ingredients in a number of wonderful dishes. Of the various vinegar varieties, balsamic is perhaps the most prized and certainly the most expensive. What does the term vecchio referred to when describing balsamic vinegar, the acidity, the age, the sweetness, or the viscosity? You've been to Italy enough to know Vecchio, I know. Oh. Can you give me those one more time? Yep. Yeah. Acidity, age, sweetness, viscosity. Age. Yes! yes. <laughs> uh, in number four, in what year did the first Starbucks open in Seattle? 71, 75, 82, or 93? 82. 71. Oh, wow. I know. I'm old. Well, and plus they were a different company than they are yeah. now, don't you think? Yeah. Boy. Wow. How many calories per gram are stored in protein? Oh, everybody knows that. Come on. <laughs> what are the what are the samples? Uh, what uh, multiple choice mean? Yes. Uh, four, ten, eighteen, or thirty. Thirty. 
It's four. Oh. <laughs> four for protein. All right, she got two out of five. Yes. Okay. You got two on the board. That's cool. All right, <laughs> chef in the hat. All right, somewhere in between, that maybe I hope should show up. What type of food is Cambazola? Great food. <laughs> <laughs> Try harder. Cheese. Cheese. Which is the world's largest citrus fruit? No multiple choice here. Uh, the pomelo, pomelo, yeah. whatever. You know what pomelo. I'm talking about. Pomelo. Thank you. Number three, Rhapsody, Aramel, Tamela, and Cambridge are types of what fruit? Mm. Mm. Those are a very exotic name. Very exotic. I don't know. The Cambridge, Cambridge, Cambridge. Plum. No. Strawberries. Oh, of course. Oh, wow. Did you know that? No, yeah, no, me neither. Saying no. Um, I love this one, and we both love the hands. What spice provides vitamin A, inhi inhibits hair loss, you didn't need enough, <laughs> and can prevent spider veins? It is commonly used in Indian, Hungarian, Mexican, and Moroccan food. Ooh, I that one. Paprika. Paprika. <laughs> well, that was another one. Hungarian, chef. The what? Hungarian paprika. No, well, I can beat you, chef. The, you knew, <laughs> you knew that. Oh, you mean you can beat me? Oh, wait a minute. I got. Hold on. She just challenged me. Okay, I know. I that right, was one more question. Go ahead. One more. What essential mineral is found in cheese, milk, and other dairy food? Or would you like a question about ganache? Um, do you have an <laughs> example of uh, how many minerals uh, possibilities? No. no. Start Ooh. to the C. <laughs> Calcium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the ganache question, though? I want to hear it. Oh, okay. A ganache is a combination of chocolate and what else? Cream. Exactly. Bonus mm. point. He's trying there to you sneak go. in another I know. correct answer. <laughs> Annie, today. Annie won. Woo! Thank you, Chef Annie. Bravo, Chef Annie. Chef Annie is actually the chef here at the hot stove. And if you haven't had a class here or dinner, <coughs> excuse me, or dinner, it is definitely a, a must. She's a talented individual, crafty. All right, coming up next, stay with us for the second hour because uh, we have plenty more coming, including our very own famous. Linda Kings. Kings. So Yay. stay with us here on Carol 97.3 FM. <laughs> Sorry, I had to look for that. <laughs> Thank you, Inez. <laughs> yeah. Such a good Thanks for playing. <laughs> that was fun. 58 stars. 58 starstravel.com. What I've learned about them. Answer, that there's, you gotta find the cool places. I mean, I haven't been on one of them yet, but um, we just did a Moroccan trip. It's incredible. Memorable. Did you go? No, but hearing his stories and having been to Morocco, and seeing what the Moroccan people do, and it's just Ready? Oh, yeah. oh, you want to go? No, no, go good. Let's go. So, hang on one second. Oh, yeah. I skipped that one. I didn't put it in, but I should have a better lead in to start the session. That's okay. You're a natural. They come in green, red, black, yellow. Puis, what are they? Exactly. You can also see much better once you put them on. <laughs> Lentils. Lentils? It's a French name for lens. Oh. Who knew? It's a joke. It's a, jo it's a silly joke we play in France as a 
wood joke, you know, when you do a wood joke. Mm -hmm. you know. Very nice. What can you eat and help you see? Lentils. Lentils. All right. We are back in the kitchen at the Hot Stove Society for second beautiful well charged hour. I'm so excited. We Be have with you today. Pam, Miss Pam is my co-host today because Tom ditched us for a golf game. Good for you, Tom. Exactly. Um, you know, he deserves we're, it. We're holding the fort here for you. Don't worry. And uh, hope you win. Yeah. Bring back some money. Bring back some money. Yeah. And uh, we have a second arrow that is well, well, well garnished here. We're going to start with talking with lentils of many different kinds, but also apples of many different kinds that are available on Good the market. Good combo for fall. Yeah. Uh, the two together really works well. Yep. And um, the last two segments, we have a wonderful nationwide known 74-year-old um, beautiful woman in the kitchen. Her name is Linda Kins, and she's been everywhere, every social media and every media outlet. And uh, she's going to talk to us about how do you win 34 Blue Ribbon label in one fair? Because I've heard of one, two, three, if you're lucky, but 34 is over the top, as everybody knows. So we're going to talk to Linda and see how she did. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. Sounds like we're going to talk to Julia Child again. All right, let's talk about lentils. You put that uh, segment on the show for today. <coughs> I happen to love lentils. I know um, you do. That's why it's another good topic to cover. I've cooked many lentils over in my life. Uh, oh yeah, does Tom like lentils? He doesn't really like lentils. No, That's a we, shame. We had to. I think we can turn them around. Yeah, because lentils are really we, they're very can. delicious, especially. I, I mean, I think they have flavor. You know, it's not like they don't have any flavor. Um, there are some that are much different than others. For example, the regular one you find on the market, which is usually the brown lentils, the one from Idaho, Washington. You know, we have our own lentils growing. And we have a lentil festival. We have a lentil festival and all that. So there's definitely, um, it's a great local, or at least statewide, um, legume, because it's not a vegetable anymore, or never been. It's considered a legume. That's a trivia question. Um, but it's such a versatile product. It's To me, it's as versatile as beans. For you sure. Know, you can make lentils into a soup. You can put it on in a stew, and you can also use it as a garnish on a plate for a fish, a meat, whatever. So they have also different types of lentils. They have the yellow lentils, which to me are much more fragile of a lentil, much harder to cook correctly, does great in soup. I like to mix them with uh, another type of lentils. For example, the green, I'm a big fan of the green lentils, the one they call the Puy lentil, P-U-Y which is a French uh, city, the Puy de Dome, in the center of France, and they're famous for their lentils. Um, but anyway, I like green lentils and yellow lentils, and I put the yellow lentils or the orange, yellow or orange, what color you want to be, I put them uh, towards the end because they cook very fast. So I start my green lentils and then halfway through put my- That's a good idea to put combine my, the textures. Yeah. So you have one that's much softer than the other. <coughs> I'm also a big fan of green lentil with duck confit. Oh, or green lentils oh, yes. with ham hock. This time of year, ham hock and beans is a common thing to do. But I like ham hock and green lentils. I think it makes such a beautiful. Yeah, that you have is a nice a little smoked hock, combo. little smoked hock, and you put that into your lentil to cook gently with your lentils. Oh. Beautiful stuff. You end so up, you'd have a, a hock and a water? Yeah. And, and Warm up the hock gently. Uh, I would actually put it in the oven, covered, and warm it up gently at about 300, 325. Keep it low. Keep it low. Just you trying to warm it up. And then I would do this, the lentils on the side. So my lentils usually comes with chopped shallots, carrots, celery. You know, I put a little vegetable. I have a hard time cooking something just by itself. Just because, why? You can add. And in your lentil, you can also add kale, uh, uh, Julian kale at the last minute. You brought, put in your kale into the lentil stew at the last minute, so you'll have fresh, you know, kale in strip about half an inch wide. That would be very pretty and, and good would, texture, too. Well, that would be very good, too. <laughs> I, 
yeah, nutritionally. Pretty, pretty is true. But now you have green lentils, and if you do the yellow lentils, you put them, you can even cook the lentil on the side, put them in at the last minute, mix the whole thing together so you get green, yellow, you get, you know, the kale, the carrots, and then your hammer hock, you put it in there. And I would recommend doing this the day before you want to eat it because putting them a ham hock back into the lentils at the last minute after it's been nice, warm, you know, the smoke is really prominent. You put that into your lentil stew and let it cool off by itself together. They, they cool off and put it in the fridge and it will get better overnight. So the next day when you warm it up, you can just pop it in the microwave if you have a microwave for a minute or two. It's hot instantly, but more importantly, it's nicely smoked and everything has picked up a little bit of the that smoke more flavor. flavor from resting yeah. together. Put a bunch Relaxed. of chopped Italian parsley, flat parsley into that as a, and then some finishing sea salt, just a little bit because the ham hock has a little salt in it. And you just have a wonderful dish on your hand. We should make that this weekend. That ham sounds incredible. And lentils. Wow. Simple, very simple and really not hard to make. You know, like I said, make it on Friday, eat it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like this, you'll have a wonderful curated piece of meat and lentils and everything will be super delicious. So um, another way to do soups, you know, to do, uh, yeah, to do soups. Same context in terms of cooking the lentils. I don't very much into uh, cooking the lentils with sauteed onions, carrots, celery. I like to use <clears throat> those basics uh, vegetables that I always have in my fridge. And then add to it, you know, you could do Brussels sprout leaves. This time of, of year, we start eating Brussels sprout. You roast your Brussels sprout leaf and then, or your Brussels sprout halves, and then you break them down and put it into your lentil at the last minute. Again, put it at the last minute. It doesn't need to be in there for yeah, hours. Yeah, you want to keep the crisp. Correct. And the color. And the flavor. Yeah. You know, you don't want to dilute all that. Uh, same with cauliflower. If you're roasting a big head of cauliflower, you break it down. You roast the big head of cauliflower into your oven, and then you take all the pieces of cauliflower and you break them down into your lentil soup. Now you have lentil soup with roasted cauliflower, maybe some curry or some even some cumin. I was talking about I cumin I saw earlier. a lot of curry with lentils. Yeah. I think from the Indian traditions with dal, I mean, it, they, it just picks up the spices so right. well. And then once your, your lentils are cooked, you can also use that next to the pork tenderloin we made earlier in the show. And if you miss that segment, I consider or going back or podcast the show and go back to that segment where you make a nice pork tenderloin medallions on your plate and a nice little lentil stew next to it. That's that, a and happy then, meal. And then some sauteed apple, which we're going to talk next on this show. So if you stay tuned, we'll tell you how to have pork tenderloin, lentils, and apples. Oh. Here we go. Stay Hooray. tuned. It's coming up on Caro 97.3 FM. Way to bring it all together, <laughs> chef. <laughs> This is real radio now. <laughs> wow, look at this. Wow. I'm astonished. Oh my God almighty. Where am I going? Sex once a week? No, just kidding. <laughs> that was terrible. Why did I just say that? That's a terrible thing to say. Um, no, I didn't take any effort either. Um, what else do I do? Um, I try not to do too much because I have a long condition that doesn't allow me to work or to move around too much. This show is actually a, um, an extreme of how much I do without oxygen backup. So I try to not to do too much. But aside from that, I also do a consulting job at the airport on a place called Lulu. And... It is a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Oh, wow. 
Are you trying your apples? Yeah. You should because we're going to talk about it. Does confirm that you can taste the difference. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely. I've never heard of a lady. I know there were so many little words. She had a wall of apples. For the Swiss gourmet, three ninety nine. You mean? Uh, oh yeah, everything else was two ninety nine. Oh. those were the expensive ones. Got it. Okay. No. Wait, they're not in the order. We have it on no, the. No, they're in the order here, but not because of not the. Like oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Right. No. No. Nope. But it'd be interesting now that I've tasted them. I I might have done it differently. But there is one I don't really care for. I had one I didn't like. Well, it's going to be interesting to hear what the public has to say, because I think we should have them write to us what their favorite apple is and why, more importantly. Right? Can you put that in the chat? If anybody has apple recommendations. It doesn't matter. What you like is what you like, and what you don't like is what you don't like. Yeah, but you don't have to have words to describe anything. It's, it's what I keep telling people who say, oh, I don't know how to describe wine. I go, just say, do you like it or do you not like it? Start with that. You got to start somewhere. I mean, you're not supposed... It's, it's this... Uh, we have this, in our society today this sickness of wanted everybody to be an expert at everything. I mean, you go see your doctor, you're supposed to know as much as he does. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. You're supposed to understand what he says, but you don't have to be an expert at everything that he knows in order for you to, well, that, yeah, and that, that doesn't make you an expert by reading something, that's not. There's a, something called experience and time that buys you much more than reading anything in a book. It's good to have knowledge, but you can be an expert at everything. And not finding the word to describe taste or anything like this is not the end of the world. You just need somebody who is receptive and explain it back to you. Correct. Yeah, some people know some words I've never even heard of. I'm like, uh, sure, sure it's got some of that. I'm like, what does it mean? Right. Yeah. 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 Y
right? Yeah, and, uh -huh. and then your taste might not be, it's something I always tell people, I'm like, your taste must not be as, might not be as developed. There is such a thing as developed taste. <coughs> yeah, because the more you try, especially in the wine business or in the food business, the more you expand your palate as by trying different things and pushing, 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 the more you expand, the more your palate becomes more accustomed and more familiar with it. So it develops a liking and a horizon that's much wider. It's fine. If you were? The universe is yeah. colliding. Yeah. Here's something I don't normally say. <laughs> the universe is colliding. Well, wow. I think we're in a black hole right now. Where else? Where else would you be? <laughs> oh, well, I like Pam when she says misbehaving because I know her now. <laughs> I know what that means. That's like not even before I start behaving. <laughs> <laughs> not even, not even. One sip of one. <laughs> if you hang with me, you will be an alcoholic. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. We all are. We all are. Nine. What? Nine p.m. Oh no, nine a.m. <laughs> I'm ready at nine. I'm ready at nine a.m. I'm not ready at nine p.m. Oh, that's so funny. All, All right, right, shall we? Let's crunch into some apples. We are back in the kitchen at the Hot Stove Society Radio Show. Yeah, and we are. Yes, we are. And Miss Pam is my co-host, replacing Mr. Tom Douglas today Excited. and doing quite a wonderful job at it. Thank you. And Tom, I hope you're having fun on that green lawn. And I hope you're walking miles. Yep. Good so, for you. So he can eat some more ham, hock, and lentils when he comes back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so in case you haven't heard the last hour and a half of our show, uh, we have talked so far about uh, pork tenderloin, which we managed to make decently <coughs> into something with some flavor some flavor and then um after that we talked about lentils in the last segments to go with that pork tenderloin and now we're going to talk about apple because that time of year in washington state we are blessed with such an array of different kind of apple and quite honestly we tried uh seven different kind of apple here and i mean quite honestly there's not so many bad one there's much more good one I was so enthused by walking into the PCC last night to see their wall of apples with varieties of names that I've never heard of before. Right. The expansion that's happened in the industry to bring back some of these heritage varieties and the science that's going into creating new ones. Right. I included the Cosmic Crisp because that's probably the one people have talked about um, having a one of the local universities develop uh, has been extraordinary. Right. Um, what I was surprised at was almost everything was two ninety nine a pound, except for two varieties that I included in our tasting that were three ninety nine a pound. So, so let's let's go over the the name of the apple we you have picked up. Okay. So there was the Ambrosia, the Lady Alice, the Envy, Cosmic Crisp. Swiss Swiss Gourmet, which was one of the three ninety nine. Yep. Granny Smith, traditional green apple, and a sweet tango, which was also three ninety nine. Correct. So we tested them all, and we wrote our little note. Inez is still with us here. Inez He's from, hanging tough. <laughs> Inez is the uh, owner and uh, wonderful owner of Habitude in uh, where is it? One in Ballard and one in Fremont. She's got two now. She's expanding nationwide. <laughs> Uh, Ballard and Fremont, that is nationwide. Worldwide. That is worldwide almost, yeah. Congratulations. So if you haven't been to Habitude, this is a place you go when you are so tired of 
everything. Your life. It's your, restorative. Your, your work. Your, you need a break. Great place to go and chill out and get a nice massage. Get pampered. And uh, have someone else buy it for you. It's your birthday coming up. If it's not, tell them it's coming up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> My- you can lie. <laughs> Just put a GoFundMe on the internet. Just to get some pleasure for you. From habitude. Because you know why? You deserve it. All right. Back to let's, <laughs> let's back to the apples. So we tried all seven of them. And um, let's start with Inez, your, your guest. Let's start with you. What did you get out of the seven apples? And did like, you have a favorite? I think my you don't favorite, have to. I think my favorite was the Lady Alice. Lady Alice, okay. Mm, yeah, it tasted really vintage to me. It tasted vintage, like something I'd pick out of my grandma's yard back in Kansas back in the day or something All right. like that. Lady Alice. So Lady Alice is Number a... Number two. Is a, yeah, it does look like it's got kind of like some, some beauty marks on it. It's got, uh, it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, beautiful skin of reddish all the way up to yellowish kind of color. What did you write for Lady Alice? For Lady Alice, I wrote very sweet. Mm -hmm. I wrote great texture. Mm -hmm. And what I like, by the way, um, Pam did not peel any of these apples, which thank you so much. Oh, Mm -hmm. I I have to have the peel. Yeah. I really, really appreciate that. I think the the skin makes a lot of difference in, in apples. And pears. I'm a big pear fan. I have some commis pear at home. I eat at least one or two pears a day these days. Um, and it's the same thing with pears. I like the skin on. So, of course, you got to try to buy, if you can afford it, buy the organic pear or apple and then wash them carefully. And then you're fine. You don't need to worry about the skin. It's no, you fine. want the skin. You want the skin. Extra nutritional benefits. So, Lady Alice, is there one apple you did not like, Inez? The envy. The envy. You did not like the envy. And no. why is that? It tasted bitter to me or something. Bitter. bitter. I mean, I don't know if that's the right word, chef. No, no. There is no right word. It's what you <laughs> feel like. So to me, and Pam, you can, uh, what about you, Pam? Did, what did you think of the envy? Um, I, I wasn't attracted to it. I thought it had a short finish. That's yes. exactly sort of just that's melted what it is. away. That's exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. Short yeah. finish. Mm-hmm. It's a bit watery, kind of. In the uh-huh. finish, it feels like it's a bit watery. Where'd you go, Apple? Yeah, where'd you go? <laughs> so I think, I think so. To to explain to the to the to people what I would do if I had those apple, I would put it raw in a salad. I think that's the best place it would go, mm-hmm. or raw next to a cheese plate. Because, and you eat that with something mild, like a soft goat cheese I or something like this. It. <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, you don't have to. But if you have some, don't throw them away. It's still edible. And by the way, it's not that it's bad. It's just as a different, it's not quite as substantial of a finish as the Alice. I agree with that. Or maybe in a pie. Maybe. Yeah. Well, the problem yeah. with the pie is it's very watery. Oh, so it's, I it's see. really rendering. Uh-huh. And also... If you don't have the flavor to start with, it's going to be hard to get it in a pie at in the, the end. In the pie. Okay. I think, I think that's why we use a lot of green apple, like the, the Granny Smith in pies uh-huh. making, or something that has a lot of substance in the end. Because mm-hmm. you want to test the apple. Mm-hmm. All right. The next one. What's your... Let's start from the top. The ambrosia. What did you think? I said candy. It tastes like candy. Exactly. It does. Uh-huh. It's exaggerated. Super sweet. Uh-huh. Super, super uh-huh. sweet. And I think um, that's why the contrast with the set, the one after it, the uh-huh. old-fashioned one, the mm-hmm. Lady Alice, mm-hmm. you could really see right. the mm-hmm. difference. Lady Alice is more like an apple as it, without manipulation. Uh-huh. Correct. Breeding mm-hmm. is what I thought. Yeah, mm-hmm. the sweetness of the ambrosia is quite, quite strong. So again, probably an apple to eat on its own. Mm-hmm. Very sweet. So very um, idle to eat with something that's not so sweet. So if you're eating the apple with something else, it's nice to match it with something that's not quite as sweet because you have a lot of sugar in that apple. Um, Cosmic Scripts is our next one. What did you think? I wrote that I thought felt like it was kind of bland. What about you, What Pam? did you say? I'm chewing. It was too watery for me. I didn't like the balance of 
apple flavor and the moisture. Yeah. It was like I, I got the liquid yeah. and then a little puff of the flavor, but I think the texture um, would su be suitable to cooking. Mm -hmm. So you could do it like uh, if you were making, for example, uh, uh, you know, like a, we were talking about the pork tenderloin earlier mm -hmm. with the lentils and everything. You could use that apple to do a quick saute with some spices, maybe a little heat, like ground chili or something like this. Oh, I chili. like putting the heat in it. A little ground chili, smoked, lightly smoked, almost like you could do pimenton and hot chili and then put that together put that next to your lentils or dice it and put it into your lentil after you give it a nice little saute and then put that next to your pork tenderloin. That would be one of the apple I could use for that, the, the, the crisp. The other one, the next one is a Swiss gourmet. Now the Swiss gourmet is a dollar more a pound. It's very, it was, um, it would be, in my taste, it was more like the Lady Alice of the old fashioned flavor instead of the show offy apple flavor right and it was um also tiny and compact i want it in my lunch box right i think it's a beautiful apple i think it's it's it definitely has that classy exactly like you said it's got the texture of the ancient world of the traditional apple then you pick out of a tree not perfect not but perfect. definitely has a beautiful texture the skin is really nice it, it it's got a little give under the tooth but not too much so it's, I think it's definitely a good apple, too. I yep. thought it was, like, mellow, like, soft and mellow. Mm, it yeah. is soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's not too much of anything. Mm -hmm. It's balanced. Mm -hmm. And, again, I think Balance, that, that's a good mm -hmm. characteristic. I think yeah. that this apple would actually make a good aloe apple, put it in the oven with some honey and some walnut, bake it oh, yeah. whole, and it would puff a little bit because it does when you put it in the oven, and then take that and turn that into a sorbet. You could take that um, whole thing coming out of the oven, put it in the food processor, puree it super smooth, maybe a little uh, Calvados in there, and then, which is an apple brandy, and then put that into an ice cream churner. So you end up with this gorgeous sorbet with beautiful texture. It would be soft because of the honey wow, that's in there. Wow, you go, chef. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you go, chef. I like that. Wow. Uh, the next one is the Granny Smith, which everybody knows. Traditional. I've, been, uh, I've been avoiding them, but tasting this one, I said, oh, I think I might get them back into my rotation. I love Granny Smith as right. a baking apple. Oh, for baking? Yeah. Baking and, and um, because it's got the acid, it's got yeah. the texture that's really solid. The skin is really good. I mean, everything holds together when you bake it. Like if you make a tartatin, which is a traditional quartered apple on caramel, baked upside down and then back, you know, turned upside down the, at the end of baking. If you do a tartatin, the Granny Smith is very good apple to do with. They're so pretty. Too. They're pretty, yeah. but right. it's hard. <coughs> they, of course, make a great salad uh, as well. And then to finish, oh. we have the Sweet Tango, which is also $3.99, but you've already decided it wasn't for you. Mushy. Mushy. Yeah. No, sorry, sweet tango. Sorry, oh, sweet tango. I, would have been if I, I love that. tango and I love sweet, but they're not going together here. Um, and we have to wrap up, but our viewers wanted us to shout out the three varieties that are classics that we didn't have on our tasting gala Galas, Fuji, and Gravenstein, which are all winners. I am definitely in my book. with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Great reminder. Great. I was reminder. gonna say we didn't have gala. That's one thing I said yeah, earlier. All right, stay with us. Coming up, we're going to talk to Linda Skin on Zoom, right out of Virginia, the king, oh, the queen, not the king, the queen of the Blue Ribbon. Coming up next on Cairo 97.3 FM. How much more? Is it manageable? So are we really Zooming, Miss... Uh, Oh, wow. So wait, how do I, do I go on this side or do I stay here? No, uh, she can see you through this camera. Oh, cool. Hi, Linda. Hello, Linda. Wave at me. I'm gonna have to look this way.
Okay, I ate my apples for the day. Yeah. My last one. No, I shouldn't have not finished by that. Linda, Kathy, are you with us on Zoom? This is Pamela. Oh. So when you want to talk, the closer you get to the mic, the more sexy you sound. Hello. Hi. Oh, sorry. Hello, Linda. Can you see us? Yes. Oh, good. Well, we, where, where is Linda? Uh, we're waiting for a technician to... Right here. <laughs> yes, but... Can you turn your camera, your video on, your camera? Can you turn it on? Yeah. On the bottom. I'm sorry. Started it's okay. Being... There we go. How's that? Um, perfect. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> now we can see you. Hello. Hey, how are you? My name is Thierry Roturo. I'm the chef in the hat. And I'm the co-host with Tom Douglas on this show called the Hot Stuff Society radio show. And uh, we do this weekly for about 20 plus years. And it airs on Saturday for two hours on Cairo, which is a local station here, and two hours on Sunday. And you can also podcast it. And right now, you're live on YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us, Linda. You're welcome. <laughs> Glad to be here. Great to be here. And Pam is my co-host today because Tom is not here. And uh, Pam is actually our director of the show. So she's the one who wanted to make sure we see you um, and we actually talk to you and have you on the on the show. Um, I had read your story way back in the summer. I think I think in June or July uh, in the New York Times. I want to say, and I remember saying to Pam, "Oh my God, we need to have this lady on <laughs> because you're a very impressive cat, <laughs> or oh, I should say, person." Oh well, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let, let's start the uh, the. This is a, tape, a taped segment. It's actually two segments. Uh, they're about 10 minutes each. And uh, we're just going to make it conversational. And, you know, I'm sure you've done this a million times already. So <laughs> She's gotten so much press. I think she's very uh, ready for you. <laughs> there you go. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are back at the Hot Stuff Society radio show. I'm Thierry Rotiro, the chef in the hat. And my co-host today is Miss Pam. Hi, everybody. Hello. I'm excited for Linda's segment. All right. Coming up, we have the most famous 74-year-old home cook you can possibly think of. She's made the world around news media by winning the most ribbon I've ever heard of in my life in one fair. That is the most impressive things ever. I think it was over 30 ribbon than she won in one fair in Virginia. Her name is Linda Kins. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a great, great honor to have you on the show and a pleasure talking with you. I feel like we're going to be having some good time talking with you. So um, let's start from the beginning. You are obviously a, a seasoned cook in the kitchen, home cook. Yeah, I love to cook. And... Have you been partaking in uh, fair, state fair forever or just recently? No, I've been doing it close to 30 years. But oh, wow. No one, ever, no one ever paid attention to me, but it went on Facebook this year instead of a local paper, and so everyone found out about it that way. <laughs> there he goes for Facebook. One more. <laughs> I'm hiding <the> more. <laughs> uh, that is fabulous. It's too bad that they waited that long to recognize your, your, uh, your knowledge. But you were participating in the fair. Were you winning that much before? Yeah, I usually win some about every year. I do. And, uh, but like I said, 
nobody ever paid any attention to it because it never went viral or nothing. You know, it's just my friends knew about it, the family. Right. Your yeah. family is very lucky to be able to eat your food, I think. <laughs> well, I, they say they are, so that's good. they good enough for me. I've been cooking for my husband 58 years last month. We were oh. married. Wow. Oh, congratulations. Is it, and he's still allowed to talk about it, which means your food is delicious. Yeah, it's too good. <laughs> Where are you exactly? In Castlewood, Virginia. It's a small town. Do you know where Bristol, Virginia, or anywhere like that in Virginia is? No. I know Richmond. Well, we're about a six-hour drive from Richmond, oh, probably. Wow. <laughs> and so the fair um, that brought you all this fame is called the Virginia-Kentucky State Fair? Yes. So the two states uh, combine... Um, yeah, it is two states. It's like uh, they border together, and, and uh, it's actually in Wise, Virginia, a small town about a half hour from where we live, but they call it the Virginia Kentucky State Fair, where it serves both states. And do you enter other fairs or do you concentrate on, on that one? No, I enter the Russell County Fair in the county I own. I've been entering it for every year for a long time, too. And do you win as many ribbons at that fair as you did as the uh, Kentucky one? I won 30 at Russell County, and then I went to Washington County this year and did a third fair and won 30 more there. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Are you going to decorate the entire house with just blue ribbon? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, I've got all kinds of ribbons at the house. <laughs> <laughs> that is magnificent. Oh, no, I'm not decorating my house with them, no. <laughs> I like how you stay humble with throughout the whole thing and you stay very normal. I like that a lot. I appreciate that. Oh, as well, a matter of fact. I'm just me. Yes, um, I, I get I get that. And I think it's uh, it's endearing. So so tell us about the most what is your most precious blue ribbon you won in terms of the what you've made for it? What's the dish you made that you feel like that was the most incredible first place I won on that? Well my my husband's favorite is my peanut butter fudge. Yeah, well, it's yeah. My favorite is like it's stuff I entered at the fair. Yeah. I think my strawberry jam or my pinwheel fudge. Those are two of my favorites. So how, how do you, without telling us all a secret, what how do you make your strawberry jam? Is it strawberries and sugar only or it's strawberries, sugar, sugar gel? And cook it. That's all it takes. Wow. Fresh, I love fresh it. strawberries, sugar, and sure do. You've got to have great strawberries. So is there, do you grow them or is there a farmer's market or get them at the supermarket? Uh, there's actually a farmer, a big farm called Man Farm, about an hour from where we live. They sell anything you want to buy to can, but they also bring their strawberries to our local food city, and I just pick them up there by the gallon. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it... So when I make strawberry jam, all I do is take the strawberry, put it in the sugar, I squeeze about two lemon juice, I toss them together, and I keep it on the counter for about overnight. So I keep tossing the, the strawberries, you know, so, so they macerate really well. And then, of course, they're cut. The strawberries are cut in quarter or half. And then I make my, my uh, the next day, I cook my strawberry jam just like that. That's all I do to it. And then at the last minute, I put fresh tarragon, a little bit of fresh tarragon leaves on strawberry jam. And then I put that in oh. jar and then I can them. Is this a process that works for you? No, I don't do it hardly that way. But uh, <laughs> do you think, do you think I would have a, one more ribbons in you, Terry? I guess so. I, guess I was going to ask you, do you think I have a chance at a blue ribbon doing it like that? <laughs> I would think so from what I've heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to show up. <laughs> but the thing about entering your canned stuff in the fair, like your your jams, they have to be specific in ball canning jars. They have to be sealed. They have to look good, and they have to be a half inch to the top or you don't get considered for a ribbon. Oh, wow. I'll say yeah. oh, there are some good rules. rules. I like those yeah. rules. Well, that's I use the ball. And I fill it up. I, I definitely leave it a little room. I don't know if it's half an inch. I would have to measure. And what's the other rule you have? 
clean. <laughs> they have the ball, you know, the lids have to be sealed. And right, the right. jam and stuff has to be a half an inch to the top of the, you know, jar. Right. Because if your jam's, your jar's like half full or three, four full, you don't get nothing with it or like that. Right. You, you don't want to look cheap to the market. I agree with that. Yeah. You got to get it full if yeah. you want to win a ribbon. And what size of a jar do you have to have? I use pint jars most yeah. of the time. You can use half pints, but I like the pint jars. Right, right. See, I use yeah. I use half pint or smaller because I give mine at Christmas to my friend. See, I make mm -hmm. jam. I keep some for me in pint jar, but I make the smaller one for my friends to <laughs> give away. I always find that's a, a nice gift. I, I share mine with family and friends too. So right, yeah. I'm, yeah. So you also uh, you also win for bread. You want for some bread. You made some sweet bread. What kind of bread did you make? I made pineapple zucchini bread, and I made homemade yeast rolls, biscuits, Mexican cornbread. I made different things. And you want for but all of them? Pineapple zucchini is my sweet bread that usually wins. That's wow. a weird combination. Well, how did 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 you come up with that? Or um, I found it in a magazine probably twenty years ago and wow. been making it. And do you caramelize the pineapple before you bake it, or is it just yeah? You bake it in a loaf when you get all your ingredients mixed together. Mm -hmm. It has cinnamon in it, crushed pineapple, shredded zucchini, sugar, eggs, flour, your usual stuff, you know. Right, right. Wow. Interesting. And, yeah. and, and there's a, you have a big category of savory food as well. And I, I heard that your daughter loves your lasagna. So is it because of your signature spaghetti sauce? It's where I make my lasagna sauce homemade. I don't use it out of a jar. Yeah. And I use Velveeta cheese instead of the ricotta. And my family loves it. They, It's been their favorite for a long time. Really? It's a classic flavor. I know. Mm -hmm. It's a very well-known flavor for sure. Velveeta instead of ricotta. Well, it's the local instead of uh, being brought in. That's for sure. And it's a definitely mm -hmm. a different texture too. Velveeta is a bit more um, elastic in some ways versus mm -hmm. the, the ricotta being creamier. And it's a different texture for sure. We like the Velveeta better. I've tried it both yeah, ways. Yeah. I used to use it with the ricotta when I changed to the Velveeta, and we like it better. Cool. Is, yeah. there, is there any um, – well, <clears throat> we're going to take a break, but when we come back, I'm pretty sure you've been thinking of something new – that nobody has seen yet coming up? Or are you, are you trying to create some new dishes? So when we come back, you can tell us the answer to that question. We're going to be back here on 97.3 FM Cairo. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. That was a strange exit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Linda. I was just trying to uh, lead the question and, and uh, for the next segment, but... Obviously, after 20 years, I'm still doing this on the wonky <laughs> side. I grew up in Connecticut, and fudge was so big. We had a candy factory near my hometown, Munson's, that did really uh, wonderful fudge flavor variations. But I, you don't see it as much here on the West Coast, and I miss it. So it, it obviously is quite still popular in the East. I'm happy to hear that. And you're doing such good things with with the flavors. You said your husband liked the peanut butter? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. his favorite. It's his favorite. All right, let's bring it back in. Okay, and Terry, make sure to ask her about the book and get people to uh, pre-order it. For Christmas? Absolutely. Because it's come, I think it's, it, Linda, it's going to come out next year in the summer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But Summer 23. Done early June. Early June. Okay. 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 Beautiful. Um, you can pre order at lindaskeensblueribbon.com. They're taking pre orders right now. Yeah. That's I okay. like how you get that in. Yeah. Love we got it. We got to get that in the same. <laughs> I'll let you say all this. <coughs> okay. We are back in the Hot Stove Society kitchen. So happy to be here today with Linda Skeens. Absolutely. Linda is Linda Skeen is our guest. And she's 
I, I'm, I can't even ask questions because I'm just listening to her just in <laughs> awe of what she's been doing. And this lady has won baked goods in cakes. First place, she's won pies, cookies, oh my God, brownies, savory bread, sweet bread, and candies all in first, second, and third place. I mean, it's a pretty astonishing uh, resume you have there. And uh, I don't think anybody has been topping that yet. So I bet you there is a bunch of people around the country, maybe around the world, trying to go, how can I do this? How can I, how can I play in this? You know, people love challenges. So you, you now have started a war of challenges. <laughs> well, I think they're going to be able to find out some of her recipes. <laughs> so earlier we were talking about some of your favorite. Um, what I would love to hear is, what is your favorite pie to make? Uh, in a fried pie, I like peach. But in a baked pie, I actually like pecan pie or peach pie. They're both good. Peach and Can't pecan are your two favorite. Because Thanksgiving yeah. is coming up, so I want people to get a little head start and do you have a website where people can go and see some of your recipe, maybe, or some of your ideas? Uh, yes. Hold on just a minute. Kathy? Hang on. Yeah, I do have a, a, a Facebook page and a website that they can go and Linda Skeen's Blue Ribbon Kitchen. Linda Skeen's actually, Blue Ribbon actually, Kitchen. Okay. I've actually filmed... Some uh, making some fudge and making lasagna and making banana pudding and things in my home that people have told me they've been watching and they've been enjoying it. Cool. I mean, I think people are going to, this is a time of year where a lot of people get into the kitchen because it's getting colder, it's the holidays, mm -hmm. so people get, you know, start getting cooking and thinking of cooking. So um, I think a good help, you know, if you want to cook nothing but blue ribbon dishes, I think Linda's got them all. She might not have the turkey, but she does everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that you're competing on to all those fairs. Um, do you constantly think about new things like chef do, or do you, are you very happy with what you've been doing all the time? Is it always the same thing? No, I like to try different stuff, even cooking at home. I make different things. I just like, you know, but I stick to, if I have favorites that my family like, like the lasagna and banana pudding, like at Christmas Eve, I usually have homemade chicken salad. I have cheese balls, homemade sausage balls, pinwheels, ham pinwheels. I have about six kinds of fudge and about five kinds of cookies and I have barbecued weenies. I have a big spread for them on Christmas Eve. I love how you have six fudge and five brownies. <laughs> wow. That, that is, that is my we can open the Christmas store Eve. with just that. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I make each person in the family's favorite. I usually have, have about six. <laughs> how many people do you have in your family that come to that party? Uh, I have my husband, my daughter, Kathy. My daughter-in-law, Lisa, and her daughter, and my two great-grandsons. And then I have my youngest daughter and her husband and their four kids. So we have about 13 at least. That's beautiful. Six yeah. different kind of brownies and, and cookies. Six different kind of cookies <laughs> for 12 people. That is <laughs> That's amazing. heaven. That is heaven. That is heaven. You are, you are the mother heaven. Have you made changes to your kitchen as you've done more? Com competition or have you set up your kitchen uh, for production any differently than how you make dinner for your family? No. When the, when the cookbook people came and filmed me and when Kathy films me, I just, I'm me and I'll do it the way I do it at home and I don't change anything. No. no that is beautiful. The secret it's to your success. And my stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, that is nice. That keeps you at a level where you're comfortable and you can still handle whatever you're doing. So, no, I think mm -hmm. that's beautiful. I think that's a secret of passion and life. Do you I have a mixer that you recommend, or are you more all of your batters by hand? I have a big mixer, but I have a little portable one that I use a lot. And uh, a lot of my batters, like my zucchini bread, it's by hand. Yeah, yeah. I still do more just with a little hand mixer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's it's true. Then there is a happy, happy world between your hands and the big mixer. There is definitely a whole world out there. 
of people who just cook enough for four or six people and you don't need the big mixer for that, you know, yeah. whenever, whenever you're doing it. So that's good to have a hand mixer and to have a tool like this. What about your ovens? Do you use a special oven? Do you have like a wolf oven or do just you have a regular, just a regular oven? Beautiful. <laughs> I love to yeah. hear all that. I have a 52 roper in my kitchen. So that gives oh, you an wow. idea of what I have in my kitchen. People go, what do you mean? A chef like you, you don't have a, like, no, I like my oven. It's, it's nice. It's classic. It makes me feel like I'm cooking with my grandmother. Well, yeah. that's the way I feel. Which my mother cooked on a wooden coal cook stove. I right. don't know if you know wow. about that. Yeah, she made her homemade fudge and stuff on that. And I was actually making chocolate fudge on a video a while back. And uh, I was explaining to the viewers that when my mom made it, it was in an iron skillet on a stove and there was no thermometers. Mm -hmm. She would drop a little bowl of it in a bowl of cold water. And when you could make a softball out of it, it was ready, a softball stage. And that's the way they tested. A lot of people didn't realize that. Yeah, when I was apprentice, that's how you learn how to cook sugar for different stages. You know, the, mm -hmm. they make you do the, exactly the same exact thing. They make you do the test of like taking the hot sugar and dropping it in high water, seeing the texture, uh -huh. and that's how you learn. And that's uh, why my mom did it. And I tell you mm -hmm. one thing, you learn not to be quick because when you put your finger into hot cooking sugar, <laughs> you don't want to stay there forever. <laughs> you're not it's just like when you're cooking with jalapeno peppers, you learn to wear gloves. <laughs> you're bad one time. Yeah. After the yeah. first time, yes. <laughs> so you have learn. a cookbook coming up next year and the whole world is waiting for. Um, do you have any special highlights? You want to tell us about that book? What are you putting in the book? Besides, are you going to put all your secret recipe? I just put a, it's going to have actually my life, a partial of my life story. My husband was a coal miner for years and I cooked at school. I volunteered a lot at school. It's going to have my story in there. And a lot of the recipes are special ones to my family or friends and Blue ribbon and it'll have all my blue ribbon winners in it. Oh, so they will be in there. All the winners will be in there. Okay. Wow. That's going to be an impressive. How many pages are you making? <laughs> How many pages? I'm not sure. They got over 100 of my recipes. It's going to be a pretty good size cookbook, though. Yeah. Nice. This is so exciting. You know, there's not enough of you in the world. So I'm very excited to see a home, uh, just a good home cook come out and make those beautiful cookbook and share it with everybody because I think it's a, uh, we talk about this on the show with Tom, never let the recipe die. Make sure you pass it around, you know, pass mm -hmm. it down, pass it down. I think it's a very important thing to do to let the next generation have, you know, something to hang on to and to something good to I cook. So yes. <laughs> You know, and, and they a lot of people have told me that the thing that they like about I made pinwheel fudge and they told me I had 750,000 people watching me. <laughs> I showed people how to do it with their hands. It was easier. And they said that they and one girl even entered the fair and won a ribbon and said she'd never been able to do that before. So she watched me and she decided to do that. So it makes me feel good that somebody's getting something out of it. Right. It's always beautiful and it feels always nice to pass it around. That's for sure. That's right. You're fortunate. Mm -hmm. Why not pass it around? It's always good. Well, well it's, been, it's been a real pleasure talking with you and I wish we had more time, but um, it's been a great pleasure. Our guest is Linda Kins. Uh, the website is, Linda, what is the website again? LindaSkinsBlueRibbon.com to order the book and the website is, Linda, that's, the website. that's the website too. Yes, sorry. Okay. Linda and Skins. It's a pleasure talking to you. Oh, I um, absolutely. And I love your accent. It's so beautiful. I love the you, southern. Linda. I love that southern accent. It's so good. Well, we appreciate we love French you. Accent. Yeah, I love a French accent anyway. So I really enjoyed this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Linda. You have a wonderful uh, holiday season and all the best on the cookbook. We'll, we'll probably try to have you back when the cookbook comes out and have you back on the show if you don't mind. Hey, that'd be great. Thank you. And you have a wonderful day. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was Linda Kins. Uh, Linda Skins, pardon me. Yeah. Spell her name. <laughs> so, Linda Skins, she's a Blue Ribbon winner. Don't forget to go to her website, lindaskinsblueribbon.com. 
All right. We're... I know. I know. She's adorable. <laughs> that that she is including her story and her husband and, and her recipes. Oh. All right. If you want to be part of the show, you can join the community on YouTube Live at Tom Douglas and Company, or you can buy a ticket and join us, like, like. Inez did. Inez did today. And she got pulled right in. She got pulled right <laughs> in. She's a good She's trooper. The, she was on the show. That's so great. You're not all going to be on the show because the other 376 <laughs> people didn't make it. <laughs> but, you know, we pick people out of the audience just like that. Um, and uh, you can buy a ticket and join us here or in the studio at hotstovesociety.com. You're listening to the Hot Stove Society show on Carol 97.3 FM. This show is produced by Pamela Hinckley which is called Miss Pam. Miss Pam. Sean McFadden, who is our technical wizard right there in the corner, and our talented editor, Sean De Torre. Also, remember, if you miss any episode of our Hearts of Society show on Carol 97.3, you can listen via podcast. Just subscribe with your favorite app. Thanks for listening, and bon appétit. Oh, very sweet. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that's funny. See, Sean? That's, that's, all, it, that's all it takes. And bon appétit. Oh. <laughs> if you talk close to the mic. You and now, if you only did a little singing and for us. Now. <laughs> all right. I didn't know you guys have been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. Wow.